Well, amen, everybody. Oh, All right. Hello, it's Apostle Dr. Linden. Dr. Yeah, he's a doctor too. Apostle Jeff. And we're from Covenant Life Church. We want to thank you for joining us today. Yeah. All right, go ahead, honey. Lord, we just thank you for this day. We even with everything that's happened and everything that's going on. Amen. Still, we rejoice in you. Yes. And we give you honor and we thank you. We thank you for this other method of delivering the word for today. And we're grateful for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So the announcement today, uh, we apologize. Uh, we're on Facebook Live or Facebook only today. Um, we had some major roof leaks. It was uh, like a flood. <laughs> no, it wasn't like a flood. It was a flood. I'll tell you, so I apologize to all of our local people. Uh, but thank you for remaining flexible. And we praise God for the technology that at least we're on Facebook. Amen. So we can carry on by God's grace. Um, so there's going to be uh, some major roof repairs uh, taking place. We don't know how long that's going to take or whatever. Uh, but for right now, we're going to. We're not paying for it. Amen. Uh, we're we're going to believe God uh, that's going to get fixed quickly. But we will keep you posted. Okay. So all of our people, um, everyone connected in with Covenant Life Church. Yeah. Please watch your email. Okay, we're Amen. going to be sending out e blasts to let you know uh, what's going on and when we're going to be back in the sanctuary live. We hope it's not uh, too far away. Amen. Amen. Uh, but they're going to have to do some major roof work. And, um, and then, but uh, when then, you know, we'll keep you posted. Meanwhile, Amen. we'll be on Facebook. Amen. So already next Friday, Sunday, we'll be Facebook only. And uh, so watch your, watch your e blasts. Uh, check our website. Uh, for those of you who are new, it's www.covenant-life-church.org. Amen. Mm. But you know what? The Bible says, all right, <laughs> uh, many are the afflictions, right? But the Lord will deliver us. Amen. Mm. And so, you know, things happen, but everything is going to work together for our good. Mm -hmm. And God always has a ram in, in the bush. Amen. So we're believing out of this situation. Uh, that something better is going to happen. Yes. At the very least, it's going to be a brand new roof. <laughs> yes. Amen. And so if it isn't a brand new roof. We're not going to go back in there and but, go through this again. But we, we're going to keep praying. All right. We want to be careful and pray through. So everybody keep praying. All right. We don't want to be out of God's will, whatever mm. God wants. And we mm. don't want to dictate to the Lord. So uh, everybody pray that this rough situation comes out the way the lord wants it and keep praying for our help amen amen mm -hmm. all right praise god with that we're going to turn it over to apostle jeff and he's going to start the sermon amen well as the lord would have it today's title is the battle plan forward the battle plan forward okay you're, you're going to cut cut me out you want, you want me to no you're not cut out point. just oh, okay. leave it yeah all right it's good all right sorry submit <laughs> so anyway the title for today is the battle plan forward okay and, we, and we've heard a lot uh uh about well maybe not we haven't heard a lot but you've heard us talk about uh, the army of the lord movement and uh you know the come next coming move of, of god the next restoration is the army of the lord well no army it goes into a battle without a plan okay you know they plan what they're doing and what they're going to attempt to do now just let me say this about plans as we've seen from this latest example things don't always work out the way you think they're going to work out okay you know so something surprising can happen and we certainly had a surprise this morning uh, when our elders called us and, and they looked like they were looking for Noah's Ark. There's so much water in there. So Amen. Uh, we're just going to uh, continue forward. But I wanted to let you know that we, we've seen that in our own experience, that you start out in a certain direction, doing a certain thing. And everything within your ability to discern the voice, the voice and the will of God 
is, is in alignment and you're on path, all right? And then something happens and you just turn 90 degrees and go mm -hmm. in a completely different direction. Well, the reason for that is the devil started building up all his op opposition when you were going that way. Mm -hmm. Well, you're not going that way anymore. You're going this way. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing back here for him to work with. So sometimes these surprising developments are actually a strategic move on the on the Lord's part. Mm -hmm. And so we want to talk about a battle plan forward. And when we talk about a battle plan forward, we're talking about you having a battle plan forward. Okay. Amen. You have to have a battle plan for it also. Yes. So it, it's a, it directly linked to spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. And spiritual warfare is overcoming the flesh and demonic opposition sent to prevent us from hearing and obeying God in order to fulfill his will and our destiny. All right. Amen. You know, Jeff, uh, before you start on that, these are great teaching points. Mm -hmm. okay these are prophetic teaching points mm -hmm. okay you know we always talk about a ram in in the bush yeah okay think about that scenario for a minute just like pastor jeff was talking about okay you got the word of the lord to, to pursue a certain thing right. and all of a sudden all these doors are blocking you and like he said the enemy is blocking that okay and then all of a sudden it might not come through but then but then all of a sudden something else pops up Mm -hmm. And we all call that a ram in the in the bush, right? Mm -hmm. So God had a plan the whole time, the whole time. But what's important going through the process is that you hear and obey His voice mm -hmm. every step of the way. Yeah, because then you'll be at the right point right. for you to see that ram in in the bush. Amen. And then He'll speak to you and He'll say, "That's it. Step into it." Right. So we don't honestly know right now what's happening to us. Okay, and many times he doesn't tell you because you have to walk by faith. Mm -hmm. No matter, I don't care how anointed you are. Okay, he may not tell you every step. Right. But we all got to trust the Lord. Right. And we all got to hear and, and obey. So that's what Apostle Jeff and I are doing right now. Mm -hmm. We've said, Lord, we leave this situation into your hands. Right. And we don't know how you want it to come out. If you want the roof fixed and we move in, or or is there a ram in the bush or what, what does it look like? What mm -hmm. what? You know, we don't know what God is doing. And mm -hmm. so we're going to move forward step by step, one day at a time, mm -hmm. right? And seek the Lord. We got to continue to pray and continue to hear his voice and just do today what he tells us to do. And tomorrow will be where we're supposed to be. Amen. So, and let me say this stay too. Encouraged. Say, let me just say this too. You don't ever have to worry about missing God's will. Right. All right. The only way you can miss God's will and it doesn't and it turns out to be something evil or bad for you is rebellion. OK, mm -hmm. just like some people have heard the heard and been told they should tithe, And they're not. That's rebellion. OK, mm -hmm. that's going to cost you sooner or later. But if you doing everything you can to discern God's will and his voice. If you miss it, he'll, he'll fix it for you. He'll bless it and put you back on the right path. All right. He, you know, he doesn't get angry because you missed him. If you were, if you had it in your heart that you were trying to do the right thing, God will all, and you know, whether you, you're what's in your heart that you were trying to do the right thing, just like Linda and I know, we had this building all fixed up. It was beautiful. It was just what we always wanted. We thought, glory to God, you know, here we are for a couple of years. We're going to, at least, we're going to be in this nice, beautiful place. And look where we're at now. We don't know now. You know? Right. So, but in any case, we know that no matter what happens, God is going to make it work. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because we know that it was in our heart mm -hmm. to do the right thing for God and for his church. Right. So uh, I'm, I can't help but to be a little irritated, maybe a lot irritated, but I'm, 
I'm dealing with it and I'm, I'm getting it back under control again because we know our God. Amen. Amen. All right. So I want you to remember these four battle tactics of the enemy. All right. We know that in John 10, 10, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Amen. Now that word expression that they may have it more abundantly in Greek is zo, Z-O-E. Zo means absolute total life or life in the absolute. Okay. In English, it's translated as eternal life because that's as close as we can come to what the Greek means in English. All right. That's what he came to give us. All right. The devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. All right. So know this. I want you to remember these four tactics of the adversary. Your battle is always for a season. Mm -hmm. It's and the battle is always for a reason. You may not know what it is, but God does. All right. Matthew 13, 21. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. So what the Lord was saying there is there's some that hear the word, but they don't let it take root within themselves. They just hear it, rejoice in it for a while, dance, say, clap, do all that kind of thing. But there's no real root in within themselves. And this is what tests whether you've got the, whether it's a root, where you've got a root in yourself. It's when it says, uh, when the, for when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word. Tribulation and persecution arise because of the word. You won't always know the exact reason, but you can be sure when tribulation or persecution shows up, the devil is behind it. And it's because of what God has told you. Amen. That word, word there means an utterance, a spoken word. So it's not just the Bible. It could be anything God has spoken to you. All right. Amen. The Lord knows all things. We don't, so we might as well seek his help. Your battle is always for a season. There is a time limit to all struggles. Amen. Oh, no, that's a good word. Luke twenty two fifty three. When I was with you daily in the temple, you did not try to seize me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Notice he said, this is your hour. This is your season. It's only a, it's a portion of time, not forever. It's a portion of time. The devil was allowed to operate against Jesus and compel his going to the cross for a season because it was in his power to do so. All right. And then what happened? Jesus rose from the dead and turned the tables on him entirely. Praise God. So. <clears throat> Your battle is always for a season. Some of us need to say that to ourselves right now, myself included. This is only for a season. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, All right. amen. The third thing is strife. Strife. When all are working toward the same vision and purpose, the adversary seeks to bring strife. All right. James 3.16. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. Now, just imagine, for where envy and self-seeking exist, strife, striving over what's mine. This is mine. I want this. I need this. I got to have it. Self-seeking. I need that title. I need that promotion. I need that. When that exists, there's confusion automatically. There's confusion in every evil thing. Amen. 
every evil thing. Mm -hmm. Strife is being is being in carnality. This does not mean this does not mean not standing up for what's right. Okay, we do have to strive after righteousness. We do have to fight over righteousness. I'm sorry, we do. I know that there's places and churches where it's not popular anymore. You know, let everybody just get along, you know, love, 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 love. And I'm all for love, but you can't love somebody or something more than you love the truth. Amen. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, Amen. the life. Amen. And you can't love something else more than you love the truth. Amen. And the truth is abortion is wrong. Homosexuality is a sin. Yes, it is. Sorry if it's not politically correct. I've never been politically correct my whole life, so I'm not worried about it. But still, we have to stand up for truth. The strife that this is talking about is people striving with each other over selfish things, over being envious. You know, somebody's got a bigger ministry than yours somebody's got a bigger house than yours somebody's got a better car than yours somebody's got a better job than yours there's no no point in striving about those kinds of things because it first thing that happens is there's confusion i think the perfect example of it is right here in washington dc right up the capitol they're fighting all the time. I don't care if the question is what time is it, they're gonna fight over it. Yeah. And that fighting and that self-seeking and that political one-upsmanship that they do mm -hmm. is releasing confusion. And this country is, I've never seen it, people so confused. They're so confused they can't tell a boy from a girl. Mm -hmm. All right, you're not allowed to say she mm -hmm. or he anymore. I guess you're supposed to say it. I don't know. <laughs> but in any case, that's what the strife does. It releases that kind of confusion mm -hmm. and every evil thing. Mm -hmm. Every evil thing. Wow, you know, envy and self seeking is something we need to avoid like the plague. Mm -hmm yeah amen it means it not not is there's nothing wrong with standing up for what's right but an attitude that already knows everything have you ever met somebody that already knows everything <laughs> pastors need them all the time <laughs> yeah they already know everything yeah i couldn't help it i asked this guy one time I said, well, if you know so much, how come you're in such a mess? <laughs> you know? So well, what do you say, honey? I can't repeat. Okay. <laughs> so right. first Corinthians three, verse two says, I fed you with milk and not with solid food. For until now you were not able to receive it. And even now you're still not able, for you are still carnal. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? In other words, look at that. At that. 1 Corinthians 3, 2. Strife and envy kept them from receiving deeper revelation of the word and, and deeper teaching. Everybody wants to go deeper. Oh, that's deep. We need to go deep. What for? You can't swim on the surface yet in, when you're in strife and envy. So in this battle plan for one of our battle plans is going to be to resist envy and strife and divisions at all costs. Amen. There's people that not only like to argue, not only like to argue, but they want to get everybody else arguing too. We're going to avoid that at all costs. I mean, even when you're witness to people, 
the Bible says that a heretic after the first and second admonition reject being self-condemned. In other words, I'm only responsible to witness and, and work with them once or twice if they're going to insist on being uh, committed to something that isn't true or to arguing or striving. I'm to walk away from it because God doesn't want me, he doesn't want my peace disturbed by strife and envy so that every evil thing can come in. Are you listening to me? So we stay out of envy, we stay out of strife. That's part of our battle, battle plan forward. Mm -hmm. It steals your life. And the third thing, that it, fourth thing, that in this time of battle is there, the devil sends things to steal your peace. All right? And, you know, things happen that will steal your peace. I mean, I wasn't all that peaceful uh, early this morning. I, you know, I, I, I wasn't a raven lunatic, but I was pretty upset about what's oh, happened to our church. pretty mad at, at the devil. Yeah, we're okay. pretty mad at whoever said they fixed the roof and didn't. Yeah. And, that, and that's the flat truth of it is somebody is not telling the truth. Mm -hmm. because this water damage that we've had in the church is the damage that the Purple Heart had to repair the place from. And this landlord said it was fixed. Yeah, that, Purple Heart was the people be before us. Right. So this is the second major time. In the same place. So, so and it was a tremendous amount of water. So there's this isn't a pinhole it, you know, in 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 the roof somewhere, this is a major yeah. problem up there somewhere. And yeah, praise God, our people were there this morning to take care. Oh of man, if they hadn't, we'd have been up a prick. I'm just telling appreciate you. the elders being there and the worship team, and they were mm -hmm. cleaning things up quick. Praise mm -hmm. God. Yeah, thank God for our elders and our worship team. Yeah, I tell you, they were wonderful. They were great. Mm -hmm. So, what I'm trying to say is. Things are done happen in life to steal your peace. Mm -hmm. Life with God is enjoyed on the inside. Yeah. All right. It's enjoyed in here. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart now hear us that the promise is he leaves us his peace. Yes. That's the promise. Here's the condition. Let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Mm -hmm. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Yeah, that, that's a trick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Because when you think about it, like, look at us right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I can do about what's going on at the church right now? <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. We have to pray. But the devil would love for us to be upset and in strife all day, all night, you know. And none of that is going to fix it. None of that is going to fix anything. And I, and I want to interject a point here. This is very important. As I, we've learned this the hard way. Yeah. Like right? most things we've learned. <laughs> you have to tell the devil you're not going to quit. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because this is what this is all about. Okay? He's trying to incapacitate me. Okay? Because we've all heard Apostle Jeff say, if Linda's not up there, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn this over or something. No, he's not. That's a lie. Apostle Jeff can run this whole place by himself, by God's grace. He's not going to quit whether I'm here or not. And I'm not going to quit whether he's here or not. And our pastors are not going to quit whether we're, we're here or not or not. So you have to tell the devil, all right, that no, I'm not quitting in Jesus' name. And I'm going to keep going because this is my destiny. This Amen. is what God has called us to. All right. So take notice, devil, in the name of Jesus. And our, the Lord's grace is sufficient for us. Mm -hmm. Amen. So this too is going to pass. Mm -hmm. Amen. And there's a ram in the bush that's even better. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get healed. And we're going to go on because of God's grace. And sometimes mm -hmm. that's what you got to tell the devil. Mm -hmm. And you got to verbalize it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, he will keep attacking you because he will think that he's winning. Mm -hmm. And he wants you to quit mm -hmm. and give up. And so that's what all this is about. 
All of it. Mm -hmm. He's hoping he's heard the prophecies over our church. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want miracles to come forth. He doesn't want us healed. He doesn't want you healed. Okay? Amen. And so you have to tell the devil, I'm going on because of God's grace. Mm -hmm. And make sure you say God's grace. Yeah. We never do anything in our own power. Only by the grace of God. Right. Amen. Okay. So, peace doesn't come from success, promotion, and feeling good about everything all the time. We find peace in the kingdom of God, which is righteousness, peace, and joy within us. We don't have to go get it. We already have it. It's your focus that will determine the outcome. Are you listening? The peace yeah. of God is already within you. It depends on what you focus on that determines whether it manifests or not. I can sit here and focus on all the dirty things that happened down there and at the church, all the things that are going wrong. My wife's sick. The church building's leaking like a sieve. The, we couldn't have service. And, you know, and there's some other personal thing, things that I won't go into. You know, and I could be focused on that and just be tormenting myself. And so this or, morning we were or, listening to all the or, good stuff. Or Amen. I could be listening to the word of God. That's right. I could be praising God. I could be listening for his voice. Devil's a liar. Something. And you know what? It's not sinful to just sit down and relax and listen to some good music or uh, maybe a, a football game on television or something for just a few there's nothing wrong with that. It, it's not sinful. Okay. So, you know, it, it, I think sometimes we go to the other extreme and make it sound like you got to be either reading the Bible or, or working. And the truth of the matter is, there's a lot of things we can enjoy that there's no problem with. Amen. We sat down in the midst of this, drank our coffee. And started thanking God for all the things we have. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, everything that we have. Amen. Yeah, we sure did. And we have a lot of things to be thankful for. Yes, the Lord is Amen. good. Amen. So being right with God, knowing we're right with God, and doing the right thing out, out knowing who we are in Christ is a price, is a process. But it leads to that peace and joy that the devil and no man can take from us. All right, there's a peace and joy circumstances can't take from you. There is a place in God where no matter what happens on the outside, you can have joy and be at peace on the inside. I've known several men in my lifetime that, that I really admired. Uh, Apostle Leon is one of them. Uh, no matter what happens, no matter what's going on, and, and they have some, you know, you think we have uh, getting a jam. These guys really go through it, okay? And But Apostle Leon does not get shook. Yeah. He just doesn't. Yeah. Bishop doesn't yeah. fall apart. He just doesn't. Yeah. Uh, Enos, you know, our friend Enos and Diane uh, from uh, Missouri, they're like that. They 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 don't get shook. Now I'm not saying they don't have challenges. Doesn't it? They all do, just like us. But what I'm saying is the challenge doesn't take their peace. So we're going to avoid envy and strife. Uh, amen. And we're going to mm -hmm. strive to keep our peace and our joy. Mm -hmm. All right. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. Amen. When the devil can't touch your joy, mm -hmm. he can't touch you. Amen. Amen. So if you would turn with me to Philippians chapter one. Philippians chapter one. Amen. All right. So we're going to avoid envy and strife. We're going to maintain our peace and joy through all the troubles, trials, and tears. Amen. Amen. All right. Philippians chapter one, verse nine. We, in this season, we need to assess our struggle with truth and proper discernment. With truth and proper discernment. Philippians 1, verse 9. And this I pray, 
that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment. Mm -hmm. Notice what two things that love uh, impacts, knowledge and discernment. Yeah. Whoa. Mm -hmm. We need to think about that for a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, say law, you know, I mean, yeah. Love needs to abound in us more and more mm -hmm. in knowledge and in all discernment. Now, there are some people who think they have the gift of discernment. First of all, there's no such thing as a gift of discernment. What they're talking about is a, is a critical spirit. That's what they're talking about. And, and they they, all, they have all this discernment. They're the Holy Ghost sheriffs of the kingdom. You know, they correct everything and everybody. Uh, that's not what discernment is. Discernment comes about understanding a problem and understanding a person and relating to them. And it's doing so because we love them. I, I'm not looking, I don't want to judge anybody. Sometimes I have to. Sometimes when you're responsible for leading other people in the spirit, you have to say that's wrong. That's sin. You have to. But I don't enjoy it. And I'm not looking for an opportunity to be mr righteous or anything believe me and so we need to abound in love more and more so we could have the proper knowledge and the proper discernment john 17 17 sanctify them by your truth your word is truth so we need to have an accurate discern discerning the opposition where is the opposition coming from is the opposition because of an open door that my sin has provided like for example david after bathsheba he had uh, that rebellion with absalom his own son rebelled against him and there was a revolt within the kingdom that opened the door to all that so sometimes we need to review and just make sure we're not doing anything that's giving the adversary an opportunity. All right, are you there? Okay, mm -hmm. and the second thing is the opposition because it's my plan, so there's no grace on it. Mm -hmm. Ay, 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 boy. If, if there's anything, anything, I tripped over more in my life than that. I don't know what it is. I mean, and, and to this day, I have to read, be very careful and watch and make sure what I'm trying to do isn't my plan. Because God can only bless my plan just so much. And the devil could just tear you up. But if it is God's plan, you're still going to have trials and tribulations, but you'll go through by the grace of God. Amen. 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 So we it's very important. So what do we want to do? We want to avoid envy and strife mm -hmm. at all costs. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure we maintain peace and joy. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that we are, our love abounds more and more so that we can have proper spiritual discernment. Okay. All right. So then we have to discern is the opposition because it is God's plan, but I have to do the warfare to obtain the promise. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I you know, even just a, a, a curious look at the scriptures, you, you'll see that they're the Old Testament, New Testament, I don't care where, people didn't obtain things without having to fight the devil, having to fight, crucify their flesh, and fight demonic opposition. It's just that way. 
<clears throat> Even G Jesus had to fight demonic opposition. <clears throat> Even Peter. Jesus told Peter, behold, Satan has demanded that he can sift you as wheat. Oh, man, can you imagine? And so sometimes we have to understand that these attacks are because we're fighting. An attack can come from three sources, temptations of the flesh, the wiles or the strategies or schemes of the devil, and our own unwise decisions. We were highly in debt once. That was because of our own decisions. That wasn't God, that wasn't the devil, that was just Jeff and Linda spending more than they had. Amen? Amen. Okay, the greater the battle, the greater the reward. God is not unaware of your struggle. The battle's not always your choice, but winning is. You know, sometimes the devil just rise up and attack you, all right? I didn't choose this fight. I didn't choose, choose this battle, but since I'm in it, I'm going to win it. Amen. I'm in it to win it. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I'm Amen. Good job. You know? Yeah. So, okay. So we've got a lot of water in the church. Well, the next time we're in that church, somebody is going to get dramatically healed. That's right. Or set free or something That's like right. that. That's right. Because mm -hmm. we're in it to win it. Yes. Amen. 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 I'm telling the kids I'm taking it as a prophetic sign. What? Water is a sign of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Amen. So there's a flood in there. Did Praise somebody God. ask a question? No. Uh-uh. This is just chat. Oh, and are, so are you chatting? I'm here? chatting with the chatters. Why are you chatting with the chatters? Mm -hmm. You're supposed to listen to me. Oh, I'm 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 having fun, honey. Oh. Yeah. But I'm I'm paying attention. Sure. And yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> but hey, the, the water means the anointing. Praise mm -hmm. God. There's gonna be a deluge of the anointing coming. Amen. Just what Jeff said. Amen. Amen. I'm believing for it. Amen. So see, you know, Satan is the biggest loser of all time. Nobody has yes. lost more often. Amen to that. <clears throat> Nobody has lost more often or for longer than the devil has. Every battle is ultimately a challenge to the authority of God's word in your life. Satan knows more than we do. He sees God's blessing coming to you. Amen. I always think of Daniel. There's, there's a good example of spiritual warfare in Daniel. The angel, oh, yeah. Gabriel, was sent with the message the moment Daniel prayed. Yeah. The moment Daniel prayed. And here comes Gabriel. Mm -hmm. Now, who else do we know in the spiritual kingdom that could see something like that? Well, it's the devil. So he sent the the king, or it says the king, but it's a demonic king. He sends a demonic principality to withstand Gabriel 21 days. And this demonic power was so strong, Gabriel had to call on Michael yeah. to come and, and blow a hole through the heavens mm -hmm. so that Gabriel could get to Daniel and give him what he needed, the revelation mm -hmm. he needed. Now, supposing Daniel had stopped praying on the 19th day. Yeah. Supposing he stopped praying on the 20th day. That's right, Jeff. Supposing on the morning of the 21st, he figured, you know, I'm tired of this. I don't feel like it. You can't give up. Amen. No. No. Satan knows. He sees certain things that we can't see. Yeah. He sees angelic beings coming to mm -hmm. open doors and bless us. Mm -hmm. He's got to send opposition. Mm -hmm. Amen. He can't let you be so bl abundantly blessed that everybody says, oh, yeah, I'm going to believe God like they do. Uh-uh. No, he's going to smack you up beside the head. But God. Mm -hmm. But God. Yeah. Amen. Our side has more power, more everything. Right. Amen. So you bind and rebuke. And see, Daniel didn't have authority like we do. The, the Old Testament saints did not have the name of Jesus. 
and they were not baptized in the Holy Spirit. So they did not have the power nor the authority Amen. that Christians have. So now Gabriel doesn't have to call on Michael. Amen. Yeah, amen. Jeff can call on God and bam. Amen. Greater Z and you're, you're through. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, the, the, the battle only proves one thing. You haven't lost yet. Yeah, praise God. Good point, honey. You don't see the devil fighting somebody who's already dead. That's right. All right. Or somebody who's already lost. Mm -hmm. And we fight that. So we we fight every battle from a place of victory. Yes. Ephesians 2, 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, yeah. even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Now, this, think what that says. God says he is going to show his exceeding riches wow. of his grace and his kindness towards us mm -hmm. throughout the ages. Whoa. Yeah. I would think just seeing a skunk like me come into heaven and get to invited to stay would be enough of an example of God's grace. But no, God is going to demonstrate that in the ages to come, he might show his riches Amen. of his grace. Amen. Wow. That's awesome. Amen. So understand we approach the battle from a point where we've already won. Amen. All right. Understand this, that endurance mm -hmm. frustrates the enemy's plan. Yes. Your endurance frustrates the daylights out of the devil. That's right. Boy, he hits you with his best shot like God took one this morning. And we're sitting here today praising God and thanking him, serving him, preaching his word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Marin. And he wanted you. us to cancel the service today. We said, no, we're on Facebook. Yeah, that's right. Praise God. All right. All right. Job 42 10. And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Mm -hmm. Now, Job didn't know that going into it. Yeah. Amen. We might end up with twice the size of the building. That's right. You never yeah. know what God's ramming the bushes. Know. That's right. Amen. We'll understand the teachable or reachable. Mm -hmm. The teachable or reachable. If you already know everything, no one can help you. Not even God. Yeah. <clears throat> take heed to who you take advice from. Mm -hmm. Does their life reflect the blessings of God? If you only consult, if you only consult with the same fisherman that is in the same boat as you are, you're never going to get out of that boat. Mm -hmm. You're only rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So amen. what am I? What am I saying to you? Mm -hmm. So into somebody who is succeeding. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't look like a church that's succeeding right at the moment. <laughs> but we have in the past, and we're going to again. Amen. And so what I'm trying to say, I remember one time, uh, Apostle Gale was with us. And he just had won some big victory. The Lord blessed him with a property deal somewhere that made him a lot of money and, and what have you. And uh, he was telling people about it. He was ministering at, at Covenant Life, and, uh, you know, we took up an offering, you know, to pay his, uh, his honorarium for coming to be with us and all that. And, you know, somebody later asked me, why do you take in, uh, why do you give money to somebody who's already been blessed and gotten a lot? And, and you know, my answer to that is simple. I don't sow into somebody that doesn't know what they're doing. 
okay? I sow into and submit to and follow people who've already succeeded. People that have already succeeded. I learned that from Linda. When she was coming up through the ranks, when she was a captain, she listened to the majors and lieutenant colonels. Why? Because they already proved they know what they're doing. They made it. And every rank we went up, we went up, she would listen to the people in the rank above her. She would take counseling from them, get advice, follow their examples and things. And of course, eventually she made full bird colonel herself. Amen. My God's grace. Amen. Amen. And Jeff was there to help me. Right. Amen. So what I'm trying to, but what I'm trying to say is yeah. you take your examples, you take what you sow into. You take what you, you, you listen to is somebody who's demonstrated they know how to, how to move forward, move, be forward successful. Mm -hmm. move forward in the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Apostle Leon has gone where I want to go. Amen. And the good thing about following Apostle Leon is, is we're not only been there for when he had the breakthroughs and the good times and the victories. We've been there when he took it on the chin, too. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we learned from some of his mistakes. Mm -hmm. All right. There's not, you know, nobody's infallible. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys can all learn from Linda and I. We'll tell you where we did if we made a mistake. I am not the least bit afraid to say I've made mistakes. Amen. Yeah, we all have. We all have. And I was thinking today was getting this building a mistake you know linda and i both love the building did we get it because we wanted it or did we get it because we thought god told us to get it mm -hmm. and you know the answer that keeps coming back to me is is this was god's will for us that's right so we're going to go through whatever we got to go through yeah. we're going to do whatever we got to do that's right bless god we're going to come out on top. We're going to come out victorious. Amen. That's right. In the end, we're going to win. Right. All right. And, you know, who knows? We might be sitting in a thousand seat auditorium next time and it's all ours. Who knows? Praise God for it. Who knows what God's going to do next? Right. You know? Amen. You already know your past and there's nothing you can do about that. So we might as well fight for the future. There will always be a battle yes. over anything that involves your destiny. Yes. A battle is anything that challenges an instruction you receive. Yeah. Here's five spiritual strategies that can shorten your season of trial. Okay. This will shorten your, your season of trial. First is your speaking. Never let Satan think he's winning. Yeah. Amen. Don't say something like, well, if this doesn't happen, I'll quit. You just license the devil. That's right. <laughs> Never let the devil think he's winning, not even a little bit. Proverbs 18, 21. Mm -hmm. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. So the first spiritual strategy for a, for a full-scale spiritual battle is what you speak. If you don't like what you see, change what you say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The second strategy for this time of warfare is your singing. Your speaking and your singing. Mm -hmm. Worship creates an atmosphere Satan just can't stand. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The third strategy for a time of warfare when you're in a battle is your giving. Yeah. Sowing creates partnership with God. Mm -hmm. All right. Sowing yeah. creates partnership with God. Amen. And the fourth thing is your sharing, mm -hmm. your testimony and prayer of agreement is very powerful. Use someone you can trust. Or go to your oversight. Matthew 18, 19. And again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, 
-hmm. it'll be done for them by my father in mm -hmm. heaven amen. Amen. amen amen and so and the fifth strategy when you're going through a battle is your covering your covering is God's contact point for protection and a source of spiritual wisdom that can see things from a different perspective. You can believe that tomorrow morning at eight o'clock, I'm going to call Apostle Leon. <laughs> if he doesn't answer the phone, I'm going to call Bishop. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And those men don't mind either. Right. They don't. Mm -hmm. uh, they're true God, ministers of God. They love to serve God's people. They love to help their ministers. It's no problem. And we're, we're pastors. If you belong to Covenant Life Church, we're your pastor. Amen. We're your covering. Mm -hmm. All right. We, we, we love to pray protection and give you some spiritual wisdom. Amen. In the, as you go forward in God. Amen. You will always have an enemy. Fighting will not stop until Jesus comes. Everything good is hated by everything evil. You can discern evil by its reaction to truth and those who teach it. Satan cannot stop you unless he can convince you that he can. Mm -hmm. That's right. And that's why I said earlier, yeah, you I knew to, you were going to talk about You that. have Go to ahead. verbalize and tell them. Right. There have been times I've been in my car and when my husband was on the operating table and I told the devil, you don't, you can't have him. He belongs to God. He's going to live and not die. And we're going on with the ministry together mm -hmm. and going to finish together in Jesus name. And, you know, you got to talk to the devil. You got to tell him, you got to get mad. Amen. Even now when he's attacking me at night so I can hardly sleep, I have to get mad. I have to do warfare. Amen. Mm -hmm. And yes, we need people to pray for us and help us. But you got to get mad at the devil. Mm -hmm. I heard my husband get mad at the devil today. Mm -hmm. Amen. He got mad. All right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you got to tell him. Otherwise, he's not going to back off. And make sure you use the blood of Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Praise God. So there's five weapons that Satan is using in this season. Number one is delays. Like he tried to delay Gabriel getting to Daniel. Then there's deceit. False teaching has destroyed millions. There's distractions. Bathsheba. Expanding your time and energy on many things unrelated to your assignment from God. Then there's disappointment. All right. Disappointment is a big thing this time I mean, season. So many things have come and gone. So many plans have been laid aside. So many of us are waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And it doesn't seem like there's anything happening. It's disappointment. And the fifth thing, of course, is debt, both spiritual and physical. We'll always have an enemy. We are born into a sin-fallen world. The opposition is going to be there. You will never outgrow warfare. You simply must learn to fight. Every blessing Linda and I have came at a price. That way we appreciate and protect what he has done. God's purpose in warfare is your education and place of revelation and opportunity, not just survival. Please get rid of the survival and the victim mentality. You're not a victim. You're a child of God. And if you're going through something, you're going through something because God's going to reveal something. He's going to teach you something. He's going to Amen. show you the path forward. He's going to show you how to stand and having done all the stand, stand there for. Amen. He's going to show you how to use your sword, the sword of the spirit. He's going to show you how to speak victory. He's going to show you how to maintain your peace and joy. He's going to show you how to avoid distractions and disappointments and overcome. Mm -hmm. You'll never win a spiritual battle with logic. Mm -hmm. 
You'll never know everything that is going on in the spirit realm. Nothing is ever as bad as it first appears. Mm -hmm. Man, I want to tell you, when I saw those pictures of our church this morning, wow, <laughs> that looked really bad, really bad. But it's not as bad as it first appears. Right. It's all cleaned up. It looks a lot better. <laughs> you cannot fail. Amen. You cannot fail mm -hmm. without your permission. Mm -hmm. To fail, you have to give your permission. You'll never win a spiritual battle trying to figure it out. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. The real enemy is Satan and his minions, always. All opposition comes from the devil, always. He uses flesh and an unrenewed mind because that's all he has to work with. Mm -hmm. Your enemy's time is limited. Revelation 12, verse 12. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. You know, I told the devil just a little while ago, you know, devil, enjoy, enjoy this morning, because you only have a short time. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So, Amen. Father, we thank you. We bless you for your word. Yes, God. We give you praise and we thank you for your truth. We thank you that you're going to take us through to victory. Yes. And that we don't have to do anything except be obedient. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. We're going to shift into the prophetic. Good job, Jeff. Um, all right. So, we got a few here today. Amen. Father, we just stir ourselves up right now in the prophetic and the apostolic. In Jesus' name, and I just thank you, Lord, for it. Uh, Father, we just thank you for Christina. And Christina, I'm just hearing the Lord say that you've really been through it uh, in the last five, six years especially. And the Lord says that he has a great blessing uh, in the very near future for you. And I sense that it's in the area of relationship. I don't know what you're doing with that, but uh, like personal relationship, that there's a great blessing coming for you. And the Lord says that you've been really seeking him about your future and uh, praying about your daughters, and um, you've been trying to line everything up and reorganize some things, and um, I'm hearing the Lord say you're trying to fit in, uh, like new relationships, or fit in new things into your uh, dynamic schedule, and the Lord says if you will continue to consult with him, and pray about it, and let him lead you, he's going to lead you into all truth, he's going to lead you in the way to go, and the Lord says just rely on him, Amen. Tap into the spirit, stay in tongues, and the Lord says he will lead and guide you. And it will come out the way that you want it to come out. It'll come out the best way. But if you stair step out of it, God says some things are going to become disjointed and everything will not fit together. But he wants to fit all the pieces of the puzzle neatly together for you. So the Lord says in this season, daughter, rely on me, says God. So, Father, we just seal that word right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, this word is for hope. Uh, Gotino. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just lift up hope right now. And the Lord says, yes, you are rightly named for even as I am the God of hope. The Lord says you bring hope to many people. And the Lord says, I'm going to bring you hope, says the Lord. But the Lord says, I'm going to open up new venues of opportunity for you in the days that are ahead. And the Lord says, there's ministry opportunity for you. And God says, I want you to even tap into my spirit more, uh, says the Lord. But the Lord says that you're prophetically called. And God says that I want to show you my word, my will, and my way in a much deeper way. And so the Lord says, get into the word more. And the Lord says, I'm going to show you the nuggets of revelation in my word. And God says, while I'm doing that, I'm going to build the anointing in your life. And Father, we just come against that debt. There is a debt problem. And we rebuke that right now in Jesus' name. 
and we release that word in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, for Miss Brandy, amen. The Lord is so pleased with you, Brandy. Amen. And the Lord says that uh, there's been some disappointments lately, uh, even in the education realm, uh, even in the schooling realm, uh, even in places where you're, you're teaching and so forth. There's been some disappointment. But the Lord says, daughter, you know how to handle that. You know how to handle it in the, in the natural and the spiritual. And the Lord says, I want you to keep going and keep praying for all the people who are around you. For the Lord says, you're influencing uh, many people. And God says that many look up to you as a beacon of hope and as a source of uh, knowledge and somebody who's stable in Christ. So the Lord says, just know, daughter, that there's many people who watch for you and look to you in a very positive way. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just release that to Brandy right now in Jesus' name. Amen. And this next word is for Maria Cecile. Uh, Maria, we're sorry about that you came all, all that way today. Uh, we tried to get the word out as soon as possible. Amen. But uh, the Lord says that, uh, daughter, I'm stirring you up in new ways in this season, and you're going to touch even more people. And Maria, I don't know if you have a blog or a website or some kind of media outreach, but I, I hear the Lord say in the days ahead that you're going to have more of a media outreach in some way. And the Lord says that you're going to be touching more people. And so the Lord says, I'm crossing you even in this season uh, to have a greater anointing even in the area of prophetic evangelism. So Father, we release that to her right now in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, and Armani, uh, we're just gonna bless you in Jesus' name. Um, I hear the Lord say that, um, amen. Daughter, I'm gonna send you more people for your businesses. And God says that I'm strengthening you personally in this season. And the Lord says that you're going to be prophesying more and you're going to be doing more in this next year of ministry than you've ever done previously. So get ready, says God. Stay in the word. Stay in my spirit. For I'm raising you up to new levels this year, says God. And with you, I'm well pleased. So, Father, we just seal that word right now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Praise God. Uh, we want to thank you for tuning in today. Amen. Uh, please be in prayer for all of us in our church. Amen. We need your prayers. Uh, please hit that donate button on our website, www.covenant-life.church.org. And we appreciate and love you very much. Amen. If there's anybody out there today who would say, Pastor Linda, I'm not sure that I know Jesus. I want you to repeat after me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and forgive me my sins. I want to live for you from this moment on. And Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for the people. Father, we claim Psalm 91. Amen. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. And many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. Father, we thank you. Father, we lift up all those who have neurological problems, respiratory, mouth, tongue, throat. We rebuke those problems right now in Jesus' name. We loose an anointing and come against arthritis right now in Jesus' name. And I loose healing in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, on behalf of Apostle Jeff and I and our pastors and everybody, thank you everybody for tuning in today. Please stay in prayer for us and watch the announcements coming out on the email and on the website. Amen. Good night, everybody. Thanks again. Love you all.